Good evening, I'm Nasser Kelvi with Studio U. Since 2016, when the Me Too movement first gained nationwide attention, the conversation on sexual violence has remained a hot-button topic. Title IX is a federal law that aims to eliminate gender bias among colleges and high schools. I was able to sit down with the director of the Aurora Center, Ms. Katie Ike Lee, to discuss current campus policies on sexual violence and what factors may lead an individual to wait or to not report the assault at all. So what are the first uh, steps that happen when someone reports sexual assault? On campus. Sure. If a student reports sexual assault to the university, it really depends on who they report to first. If it's a faculty member or a staff member, there's a policy in place that talks about uh, mandated reporting and that uh, those staff members have to actually report to our Equal Opportunity Affirmative Action Office. And from there, EOAA or the Title IX office sends out an email following up with that individual. There are rights that you have on this campus as a victim survivor. There's also research resources available such as the Aurora Center for Advocacy and Education or Boynton Mental Health or Student Counseling Services. So if someone was to report sexual assault directly to the Aurora Center, they wouldn't immediately have to interact with law enforcement. That's correct. At the Aurora Center, we are a free and confidential service, and so we're actually a really great place for victim survivors to come and talk about their experience, um, even process that. Uh, we never force anyone to make any report or decide something that they don't feel is right for them. Right. And uh, my next question is, what factors do you think go into someone choosing to wait or to not report a sexual assault right away? Reporting is a really personal decision. I think when I work with victim survivors, oftentimes they come in with a level of fear. Uh, fear about um, being blamed for all of those things. And so coming to an office like the Aurora Center or telling a really good, close, trusted friend or family member who is not going to go into that victim blaming actually helps a person build some confidence in determining whether or not they actually want to go forward and uh, report and have something like this investigated. Um, I have found that when victim survivors disclose to um, a trusted staff member or, school or even a friend and they go into that shaming mode of, well, this was your fault, or you should be quiet about this, or do you really want to ruin that other person's life? Okay. Right? That's when victim survivors really shut down. So you think there's almost a second type of fear that happens after the assault? They feel a second type of fear for maybe, you know, uh, ruining the other person's life and that kind of thing. Those are the factors you think that might go into it? Those are social pressures, absolutely, that, that oftentimes will come into play from other outside sources of, you know, I've heard law enforcement, unfortunately, say those things. Um, other friends will say that, like, well, I know this person. You know, unfortunately, we live in a world full of rape, but no rapists, because the moment like people will, will acknowledge that sexual assault, gender-based violence happens, and they're okay about saying that. But the moment we actually try to implement some accountability to say this one individual actually did cause harm and hurt me. Right. A, a lot of us observers or bystanders have right. only ever seen the best side of that person. They couldn't possibly have you know, treated someone else um, so despicably. And uh, my last question is, uh, there are proposed changes to Title IX as we know it now. And in these changes, one of the provisions would allow uh, the accused to cross-examine the accuser. Uh, and I'm curious as how you think that will impact the process and what effect you think that will have. Specifically around the cross-exam, um, I actually don't think that is the worst thing in terms of the proposed regulations. It is a constitutional right to be able to uh, question your accuser. It's part of both the criminal and civil procedures. Um, and I think it's important to be able to obtain constitutional rights. Um, the way that I think it's been, that, that regulation has been uh, framed though, is this notion of accuser will directly uh, question their victim survivor. Um, or the, the complaint, the person coming forward with a report. And that's not necessarily the, the structure of many uh, disciplinary hearings. Um, this, uh, institutions can actually shape it where um, the, the respondent, the person who's accused, can submit questions to the panel or can submit questions to the investigator so that that person can ask the, the complainant or the victim survivor. And so those are actually more victim-centered and trauma-informed strategies versus this direct one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Thank you so much.
Absolutely. Thank you again for having me. Of course.